Okay. Uh, All right, we are recording. Welcome. Welcome everyone. This is our sandbox application review. We are hoping to clear as many of the projects out of the queue as possible today. We have with us some of our tag chairs on the call um, to observe and potentially provide any insights that the TOC members may not have um, gotten the chance to uh, go over yet. We first have two returning sandbox projects um, and then 12 additional new applications. We're going to try to get through as many as we can. Um, all right, let's get started with X-Line. This is a returning storage project. Uh, Nikita, can you uh, give us a brief update on this one? Sure. Um, so as a refresher, so X-Line is a geo-distributed key value store for metadata management, So, which is based on a protocol called GURP. So they mentioned that when existing distributed key value stores are deployed across data centers, the latency between nodes may be tens or hundreds of milliseconds, at which point the RAF protocol will start to become a performance bottleneck. So the GURP protocol was designed to solve this problem. Uh, now coming back to the concerns that we had raised earlier, so tax storage recommendation is that we consider them for sandbox. Uh, especially given that they offered a novel approach to existing functional areas. Uh, there was also a concern raised earlier around the lack of contributors or maintainers, especially given the health of the HCD project. Um, tax storage also acknowledged this concern uh, being real, and but it's also like true across the board for even graduated projects in certain areas within a graduated project. Um, and we also had a question around whether they, the project would need any legal or IP assistance, and they clarified that they would not be needing any. Um, so with all of those uh, discussion points, I am personally plus one for XLine coming into Sandbox, but I also wanted to hear what others think about it. Right okay. Now. Um, so we've had a lot of previous discussion on XLine. We did get an update to all the questions as Nikita recapped for us. Does any other, um, do we have any other comments, questions, or concerns for the project before moving on to the next one? Um, just a quick comment from Tank Storage. We've we've reviewed the product, the project, and it it, it does seem genuinely innovative. It is at a fairly early stage, so you know, Sandbox is the right place for it, but. Um, I think the level of innovation is is interesting and something we want to track. Awesome. Thanks so much. Yeah, I I thought they answered all the questions very well and uh, addressed all the concerns I had, so I'm I'm positive about it. Yep. Uh Josh had posted a question in in the chat around uh the repos that would be in scope for the um for acceptance into the CNCF. Um, because there is a lot of other items within Dayton Lord. I believe it's just the X line, but um, we can certainly follow up uh, out of band on this issue just to clarify which yeah. ones are within that. I mean, my question is, is it X line and CURP, which okay. their maintainer list would kind of imply? Um, or is it just, well, X line also has a couple of other named X line things. And I just couldn't find anything in their application that said specifically which repos they're talking about. We, we should probably be a bit clearer on the phone because I think when we when we mean when we say org, we actually mean are you donating a whole org? I think is what we meant to mean. Um, uh, right, and if so, what is it versus the repo? Maybe we just need to have a bit of clearer wording on that because it's sometimes people have an org, but they don't mean to donate all of it, but they still have an org. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this one pretty clearly, they they do not mean to donate the entire org because they have a lot of other stuff in there. Yep. All right, so we've got an action to update our sandbox form. And I think uh, what we'll do is we'll follow up with this project um, through a comment after this meeting just to get clarification on which, which repositories are included within it. Is there a TOC member that is willing to take on that action? Or potentially a tag chair. I can take it up. Nikita, you'll follow up. I, awesome. I can take it up. Yeah. Thank you. All right. 
Next up, Eraser. Um, this is a returning project. Ricardo had reached out to them last time to get some um, or clarification on preventing vulnerable workflows from deployment with this project, as well as uh, some of the similar runtime security projects within the cloud native landscape. Ricardo, did you wanna provide any additional color or, or commentary on the updates? Uh, I think the, the, the updates are uh, clear. So they don't see too much overlap with the tools that do uh, scanning um, or at the registry level. They do some sort of uh, some level of overlap with runtime uh, security tools like Falco and similar. Uh, they highlight this is mostly focused on the image cleanup of the caches on the on the nodes. So there, there is value on it. And also because this area is kind of uh, still evolving. I see it as a, a potential candidate for Sandbox. There was uh, an additional uh, question from Josh regarding integration and why this isn't in Kubernetes itself. And Bridget replied um, also saying that this is not specific to Kubernetes, but uh, it can also be applied in other environments. And potentially this could be taken by a working group later also in Kubernetes. Sick. Thanks, Ricardo. Um, anyone else have any further questions, discussion points for this project? Okay. All right, so next up is Wami Store. Wami Store is a local storage solution for cloud native stateful workloads with high availability capabilities and full lifecycle management of the local disks on the Kubernetes worker nodes. Um, is there anyone that wants to kick off the discussion around this project? Um. Alex? In the absence in the absence of comments, I can give a quick update there. So, uh, okay. Wami Store presented to the tag. They are <clears throat> it is a local management of PVCs and local disks. Um, that whilst there are some uh, similar projects like Karina that's already in Sandbox that has a similar sort of um, function, um, there are some unique things about. Wami store around being able to migrate data between nodes and and providing additional HA uh, and migration capability, which which is quite different to to the um, to the other systems, and it's based on uh, operating system and and uh, not um, additional sort of third party products that need to be uh, installed in the system. So it's kind of very easy to ad to adopt. So I think it, it could be quite interesting. There are a lot of stateful workloads that depend on that local storage and, and this could be a good way of doing it. Okay, appreciate it. Um, any other questions or comments from TOC members? Any observations they had? Okay, I will move on to the next one. API improvement proposals or AIP. AIP is focused design documents for flexible API development. Um, it has some core AIPs to specify patterns and practices for cloud APIs and have um, a good developer experience around that with robust, secure, and scalable design to support a variety of client integration paradigms and provide evolutionary flexibility. Um, this project appears to be one of the more non-traditional projects in the sense of how we view sandbox applications. Um, and so I'm curious how some of how we've reviewed this. Um, what do other TOC members think? I personally do not see this as a project. I see it as a collection of best practices that could be highly valuable for some of our software engineers within the ecosystem or even in some of our uh, adopters to reference, but I don't necessarily see it as a project um, moving on to incubation or, or even graduation. What do others think? Um, I don't know if I vote. I, I poked into this um, because I was curious as them submitting it, you know, and seeing, hey, do they actually have, you know, API management generators or other stuff? 
um, that's in there. And there actually isn't any code um, in any of the repos. Um, you know, you could you could potentially have code around this concept, at which point it might be worth looking as to whether or not it's relevant to cloud native, but there isn't any. I think probably in a publishing a white paper or something like that, it's a better fit than a audit. Sorry, they 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 mentioned the linter as code, like on which is not in that org as well, like on the proposal. Is it? So it's well, a little that may be code, but they're not contribute. They're not proposing to contribute it. So well, I think they are. Um. I think that's well. I well. Okay, it's not clear. May, I kind of assumed they were, but so I'm hearing a lot of lack of clarity in what actually is being contributed, even if it did include it, Linter. So let's just go down that path. Does this still feel like a cloud native project? Matt, you're off mute. Do you have any yeah. thoughts? Well, it doesn't seem like a cloud native project to me. And that's the that, that's part of it. But also, how does this project to incubating and go to graduation? And, and I think about that because uh, I was working on Artifact Hub and I was looking at, OK, what do we consider to be an adopter? And then how do you track what the adopters are? So if a project does follow this, how do you track them as an adopter and even know so that way you can point it out to us? How does something like that work? Um, and I think it's going to be more difficult to track than other things where you can look at their code and you can look at what they've done and what's been shipped and what's, you know, you're, they're going to have to explicitly document it, um, which is going to make it a little bit more difficult in some cases. Um, but it also doesn't fit the cloud native definition because I could take things that are definitely not cloud native and probably apply these same things to it. So does it fit here is the question. And, you know, we always need to look at how do they go towards graduation? And that's where I'm starting to see, like, I don't see that clear path for graduation and I may be missing something, but I don't see it. And, and I don't see it fitting in as being cloud native. Mm -hmm. and that's just what I, somebody can probably argue me into those, but those are my outstanding questions right now. Nikita and then Justin. Yeah, I think I have been answering stuff for a while. So like I wanted to make that point as well. Like uh, I don't see this as cloud native at all. I have played around with AIPs before. Uh, and I think they're a really useful project. We could probably consider them if other CNCF projects start using it and see value in it. And maybe we put it in like the data practices or that Chris suggested, uh, but I don't think we sh should even be considering it right now that given that other CNCF projects are actually adopting it in the first place. Justin? Yeah, I think I, I think what's unclear to me is also how, how to adopt it and if there are potential people who do want to adopt it because the, um, they're kind of that it's a it's a set of it's a set of google standards which are not being donated but which they the instructions recommend you fork and modify but i just i don't understand what the how the community would use something like this effectively um and i think it would be it would be good to see more of how it can be used by someone else and how the the structure of the repo and the organization works for other people to use it or collaborate on it or whatever first potentially because it's very unclear to me how anyone else would would use it now which is kind of related to the point about where i go i, mean, I think there could be routes but it might but then it's not clear that there oh you can fork you can fork Google's guidelines and modify them as for your own is a is a thing that will build a community around a project. Um, yep. Agreed. So it sounds like um, we've got enough information to move forward with a decision. So uh, 
let's move on to the next one. Uh, Q question, does, yep. is this to come to a vote or do yes. you want to be able to say? Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, Cube Clipper, it's a lightweight, friendly, reliable, and stable platform that provides a friendly GUI API and CLI for Kubernetes cluster lifecycle management. Um, they're specifically looking for vendor neutrality. Um, I think that this could do well personally. However, they could potentially go to tag security and um, environmental sustainability. There are comments within uh, their repository that talk about um, minimal utilization and, and really focus on the minimum requirements for deployment. So there, there could be opportunities to further reduce that. Um, but I wanted to check in with the other TOC members and other folks on the call. If you all have any comments, observations about Cube Cooper. I had a quick one. I, I, I see this project as fitting, but th there was a comment uh, about presenting first the tag runtime. Uh, did they do it in time or? Um, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Do we need to have them present to tag runtime first before making a decision? I, I don't think so. It was just if we, okay. if we had more information from the tag already. Well, uh, they're presenting uh, this Thursday, actually. I'm sorry, okay. Nikita. Uh, I was just saying like they're presenting in tag runtime this Thursday. Okay. Um, any other comments? Do we think this one's a good one to bring to a vote? I think yes. Okay. All right, next up, Kubestellar. Kubestellar is a multi-cluster configuration management for edge, multi-cloud, and hybrid cloud. They've already presented to tag runtime. Any questions, observations, comments? Josh, are you asking for Cube Stellar on being? No, I was asking about the previous one. Ah, that okay. that would be my one concern about the previous one, and unfortunately, I didn't get to that one before this meeting so that they could answer. Okay. Um, it's just not clear from the documentation, the repositories, whether their uh, management interface is cloud agnostic or whether it is specific to their cloud. Okay. Uh, because if it was specific to their cloud, then we need to ask them about what plans they had to make it cloud agnostic. Yep. Makes sense. Thank you for the comment and the question. So for folks that have looked at Cube Stellar, are there any considerations, additional observations that you have associated with the project? I'm a little bit on the fence about this one. Um, I think that there is value in having this added. However, um, I, I'm not an expert in this particular area, so I'm, I'm curious what other folks feel um, from runtime or some of the other tags. Kathy, you came off mute. Oh, hi, hi. Uh, yeah. Um, I think that, so. This this project handles the uh, you know the uh, some age. I think it spans a uh, broad uh, fun uh, functionalities. Uh, so there's a project called Coop Age. It looks like a little bit overlap with that, and also it mentions you know the multiple clusters, right? Um. So there's there are other projects. And that handles, you know, um, the management of clusters. So I'm just thinking uh, if they can, you know, clarify what is the difference or differentiation. You're looking for the differentiation between multi-cluster and what was the other item? I the cook H, the H class. Ah, okay. No, we have a sense of a house project, host a project called cook H. Okay. 
So better differentiation between um, their existing project and this one, correct? Yeah. Okay, I think that's fair. How do others feel? I think, uh, did we end? Oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. That's okay. I was going to say, it does seem really early for this project. Um, there's been a couple of releases. There doesn't seem to be a lot of adoption, just from a quick view. Mm -hmm. So maybe not yet, but possibly in the future. Yeah. Ricardo? I was just going to say the same thing also because they're about to do some sort of reorganization of their repos so maybe yeah maybe waiting until they're done with that and, and then reevaluate you know okay. and go ahead oh, i i was just going to add to this that you know their reason for why the cncf it doesn't really link back to any of the reasons we do sandbox projects like they could run this just fine outside of the cncf and I understand, you know, it's born from the principles of the CNCF, but a lot of things are that don't need to be in the CNCF. So why the CNCF is still one of those questions I'm left wondering, is there a benefit to being in it for the CNCF or the project? Because there's a lot of great projects that aren't part of the CNCF. So why Sandbox? Okay, so it sounds like um, reapplication after the upcoming reorg changes for the repo, as well as some outstanding questions on the project. Is there a TUC member that's willing to take that on and comment on the issue for them? I can, Emily. Thank you, Erin. Thanks, Kathy. All right. Any other discussion on Cube Stellar? And Amy, for the record, for Cube Clipper, um, we have an outstanding needs information for that project um, to get better distinguishment on bare metal. Um, sorry, not bare metal. Uh, cloud cloud service offerings, um, whether or not it works across different cloud providers or their own platform. Okay, so clarification needed. Not coming up for a vote. Yep, and I can take that one on. All right. All right, let's move on to spider pool. Spider pool is an IP address management CNI plugin for Kubernetes for managing static IP addresses and underlay networks. Um, is there anyone that wants to kick off the discussion for this one? Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, this is like a CNI plugin for Kubernetes, right? Isn't this part of the Kubernetes? Uh, no, the uh, the network plugins are all their own projects. Oh, okay. I can see this under the CNI project, I guess, but but that wouldn't be under that wouldn't be under the um, CNCF. I don't think. Uh, and those Kubernetes have, have already had um, quite some CI plugins. Does uh, CNCF host those plugins as part of it? I'm not sure any of them are CNCF projects, actually. Uh, I can't think of any offhand. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I think this project could do well from a from an adoption perspective. The question, generally speaking, it could probably do well from an adoption perspective because there are a lot of existing enterprise organizations that are either on their journey just starting out or halfway through this transition to cloud native, and this can solve a lot of it, their existing problems with their network management um, using their existing uh, architectures, firewalls, all pretty much anything that they already have in place and just allowing that onboarding to happen a little bit smoother for them. Um, but whether or not it's cloud native, I think is a good question to ask. The, 
what I have a question for you all is whether or not you think that this needs to move to a vote or if there's additional information that we need to receive back from the project that would influence a decision. Um, I know I'm not TOC, but ju just a quick comment was this does seem a bit niche, but it does have um, uses in more traditional infrastructures, but it Correct. would definitely it would definitely help in allowing some of those more traditional infrastructures to kind of become more cloud native. So there is that. Mm -hmm. Do we think that we can see this actually reaching incubation level? I just say we don't have any CNI projects other than CNI itself in CNCF, which is kind of weird because some of them are quite big projects. But the, um, but um, actually, well, yeah, I don't know. They better have some. Uh, Yeah, that's the thing. I think we we ended up with service meshes, not CNIs, in the end, um, as a category, which is it's a kind of an a, a, a abstraction layer above, if you want to look at it like that. So here's a different question then around spider pool: um, whether or not, because we don't have any CNI projects within the ecosystem are we missing a potential adopter pool because of that? And would this project fill that gap? Um, so I see, yeah, we have CNI as, as a CSM project, and there are quite some um, CNI plugins. So I'm, I'm wondering, I'm thinking, you know, if we allow this to, to be in, how about the other projects? The other projects may also start to apply then we're going to have, I mean, quite uh, quite some CI plugin projects. How we should deal with that? Duffy? Oh, sorry, I meant to be muted. I, I, I mean, I am aware that at least one of the CNI projects was thinking of applying it previously. Um, I'm not aware of any other CNI projects, but I, I do know that the CNI, the Container Networking Interface Project in GitHub, underneath Container Networking, describes itself as a, a CNCF project, which I think is true. So yeah, no, sorry, the the CNI project itself is CNCF, but not any of the individual CNI implementations. Yeah. So yeah, that's but isn't the, isn't that just a historical accident of most of the CNI plugins being commercial offerings. It's probably true, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, there's we the, in the landscape we lift Weave and um, Flannel and Calico and all those open source. Yeah. Right, they're open source, but most of those are also commercial offerings that have decided not to put themselves under CNCF governance. Um, Possible the, uh, exception of flannel, but well, we we we've we've was the one I'm aware that they were interested in contributing to CNCF a while back. Okay. So this but doesn't I think like it's, well, you know, I, I'll come back to this though. When when I look at why the CNCF, right? Uh, the first thing is it increases awareness, uh, but the reality is the CNCF sandbox projects don't get increased awareness just from being a sandbox project. They don't get the marketing and other things. Uh, some people may stumble upon them as a sandbox project, but by and large, we observe that people don't get improved awareness just by becoming a CNCF sandbox project. They've got to do something in their own right to be interesting. Um, and then with guidance of the CNCF, right, they can adhere to requirements and, and set directions, but the CNCF's in itself isn't going to set guidance for spider pool they're independently governed and so there isn't somebody here who's now going to set requirements for them uh, they may be able to go towards you know some tags and some other places to get guidance from there but they could actually do that anyway so when i look at what does a sandbox projects give them and why are they looking for the cncf 
I wonder if there is an expectation mismatch that they're looking for things from the CNCF that they aren't actually going to get by joining the CNCF. Ricardo. Yeah, so I, I was just going to reinforce the previous comment that uh, this might be a niche, but there's uh, a need from some deployment, some end users to have some solution like this. And answering Emily, I, I think I see this project applying for incubation and uh, and moving forward. So I, okay. I don't think that's, that's a stop for them. All right, Duffy, and then we're going to make a decision. And that's going back to your question about like whether this like are we missing a gap and would this fill it i think this is interesting because it is you would deploy this in addition to another cni i don't see this as a complete cni in itself this is like extending features for particular applications in your in your use case so this is where i think the use case this is where i think the, that use case i think it's an interesting project because it tries to solve some problems that perhaps other cnis don't specifically go after but i don't I, know that it would like completely be a replacement i don't know that it would live on its own as a, as a as its own cni i see it as an indirect project as well um so the question that i have is it was proposed that this go to tag network my question for you all is if we send them back to tag network um to do a presentation and a discussion what information are we hoping to get back out of that activity that would inform a decision for us i think we would want a specific recommendation whether or not okay. it is appropriate to be included from tag network okay which given that they are the smes in the space and understand the ecosystem i, I think it's important to rely on their opinion on that. Yep, I agree. Um, so which DOC member wants to champion or provide the comment back to Spiderpool um, to receive, to go and present to Tag Network and for Tag Network to come back with a recommendation on for its inclusion within the landscape? I think to that. So it just, I mean, to the tax uh, network, right? For recommendation, right? Yep, yep. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Um, next up is KPT. KPT is a Patrick-centric package centric tool chain that enables WYSIWYG configuration, authoring, automation, and delivery experience, which simplifies managing Kubernetes platforms and care and driven infrastructure at scale through manipulation of declarative configuration as data. Um, does anyone have any discussion or observations to kick this off? Josh, you came off mute. Yeah, I was thinking about this is, I mean, this is a project that came from inside Google. So hopefully somebody here should actually know more about it. Uh, my main concern about it would be ongoing maintenance because the current maintainers are people who already have like 15 different responsibilities in cloud native. It's a good call out. That shouldn't be a barrier for sandbox though. I don't disagree, yeah. but yeah. we should notate yeah. that for sand. What, what would they hope to get out of sandbox and how is this? Again, some of these projects today are, are extending the ecosystem, yeah. not necessarily integral to it. So mm -hmm. perhaps this is the direction we're heading for the CNCF is, is more these kind of ancillary projects that, um, I don't even know what tag this would go to, to be honest. Maybe. Yeah, I had trouble with that as well. Isn't this, we don't have a tag uh, management, which is something we've discussed before. Isn't this um, app delivery? The, this that's, is all around apps. That was the closest one that I could come up with.
Okay. So let me ask a different question associated with the project. The problem that it's trying to solve, which it's not really clear based, I, I've looked at the repository. Um, it, it's more a, a different opinionated take um, than actually doing something brand new, highly innovative, experimental. Again, it's an extension. Um, is this a project that we can see reaching incubation or even graduation levels of adoption? At this current state, I can't imagine it reaching graduation, to be honest, but. I, I think that the, this, uh, sorry. No, go ahead, Justin. I think this this problem space is real and there's been a, uh, you know, there's a lot of exploration in it, which is one of the purposes of Sandbox. Um, you know, I think that there's there's a it does like managing configuration at scale for is something that's a real problem, um, and I would hope that one day we have a solution that reaches like an incubation or graduation. I don't know if it would necessarily be this, but um, you know, I think that it's a real problem. Yeah, Matt? and I, I do see a path to graduation, but it's a difficult one, right? So when you look at how they would have to look at adopters, uh, they would have to have other projects mostly take and integrate their work, whether it's their SDKs or rely on their CLI, things like that, in order to build upon what they have. So an adopter might be something like um, an SDK or their CLI as part of a VS Code extension. Uh, and I think it's going to be difficult for them to get a bunch of adopters there in order to meet the adopter requirements along the way. But I do think it's possible when you look at it this way, it's just looking at adoption from that non-traditional mindset, which we're starting to see. So I do see something there. Um, and their reason for it is an interesting one, right? They would like to use the CNCF CLA because it's widely accepted and adopted and it's different than using the google cla which is what i'm sure it's under today and that does allow for a wider contribution pool and i think that is their their reason they call out here which i think is an interesting and useful reason in this place okay um so it sounds like we have some considerations for its potential to reach graduation, but there's a, a lot of roadblocks associated with it. Um, this is, again, an extension of existing capabilities that, that are within the landscape. Um, is this something that we feel, given how, given the age of the project, that we need to have them come back after a period of time, a little bit more robustness, maturity, um, more, uh, clarification in the use cases in the problem space that they're working towards, um, potentially doing a presentation and app delivery, or do we have enough information to make a decision on the project today, given the information that's presented here within the application? I, I think we have enough, I would say. I don't think that, you know, it has been around for a while. It's, um, so I think, yeah, I think we could make a decision. Okay. Yeah, so so for this this project, this is used in another open source project called Netflow, and uh, it is that Netflow part is used for class Kubernetes class server management. So this for uh, I mean better configuration. Um, yeah, it's quite it's I would say in terms of the I mean the the is the technology itself is quite it's kind of uh, it's not like you know very uh, primitive. I. Uh, is mature they have you know implementation on that um, okay thanks kathy um so this one will move to a boat all right next up is easegrass it's a cloud native tracker traffic orchestration system 
with a lot of different considerations in its design. One of the things that I do want to call out um, for TOC members and other folks on the call is that the application is a little light on some of the content that we traditionally look for, um, as well as it's a named product of a company, I believe it's a company called MegaEase, and it's by the same name. So they, they specifically call out EaseGress um, on their product page. Does anyone have any additional comments or observations associated with the project? Is this something that we feel can move to incubation or graduation? We haven't had a lot of network projects come in recently. We've seen a lot more runtime, a lot of app delivery as of late, and more storage, significantly more storage recently. I think it might be helpful for them to present a tag network and also add more information to the GitHub issue before we can make a decision on it. Those were my thoughts as well. We may also want to make it clear to them that if they donate the project, they're donating the name. And so they can't have a product with the same name, you know, a more advanced version. There can't be open core or any of that around it. We may want to clearly communicate that to them because I can imagine they just checked the IP checkbox and didn't really know the implications of what it did to their business, mm -hmm. which happens sometimes. Do we have a TOC member that will take on the action to comment on the issue for clarification of project separation from the product, um, point them to the IP uh, information that we have around uh, joining the foundation as well as we're requesting them to present to TAG Network? I can do that. Thank you so much, Matt. All right, TerraCube. TerraCube is an open source collaboration platform for running, running remote infrastructure as code operations using Terraform to replace closed source tools like Terraform Enterprise, Scalar, and ENVO. Um, anyone want to kick off the discussion on this one? I would like to just say that I'm excited to see that there is a project that has taken authentication first and done OIDC integration. So I thought that was pretty neat. We haven't seen that very often with some of our sandbox applications. Are you familiar with Terraform Enterprise? Because a lot of their application is centers around comparing them with Terraform, which is not a tool I'd ever heard of before this application. I'm not familiar with the enterprise edition of Terraform and I have not used Terraform um, personally. How about other TOC members, any experience? We use Terraform quite a lot, but not the enterprise version of it. Aaron? Yeah, same, I've, I've used it, but not the enterprise version, so. I would have to do a little more research to understand the differentiation that they describe here. I'm also wondering if that is just a gap, you know, like how do we know that, you know, the features in the non enterprise version won't eventually be merged and then this kind of becomes irrelevant. I guess it's just kind of interesting, I guess, to try to create an open source version of something that's enterprise, not knowing whether or not, because Terraform does have two different versions. Mm -hmm. It would probably be in their best interest just to close that gap. And then what would happen with this project? Yep. That was my concern. I would also be curious about like any IP perhaps. Yeah. 
Okay. Also, my other concern is if if we are going to take on a project that is essentially um, a feature clone of a HashiCorp project, it's not something to necessarily do casually. So yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, it looks like they also have very low contributor diversity with just two contributors making most of the comments. All right. So do we have enough information on this application to move it to a vote? Or do we need to return it back to the submitters with requests for additional information? And if so, what are we looking for? Their long-term strategy should Terraform wish to close that gap? Justin? I mean, I, I, I kind of wonder about engage kind of engagement for they, they, this is they seem to be trying to build a product and it's difficult to manage an open source what was effectively an open source as product I don't, I, I don't as a as a CNCF project so because it's um very you know vertically integrated mm -hmm. um so I don't understand what the you know quite what the contribution model and con contributor you know contributor model is for things like that Josh also brings up a point of whether or not we would consider it to be cloud native. So is there enough information to move this to a vote? See some head nods. All right, Amy. Next up, I hope I am pronouncing this one correctly. My Crocs. Probably not. Um, the Kubernetes native multi protocol open source enterprise testing and mocking API solution. Who would like to kick off the discussion for this one? I think this one is interesting because it pulls uh, mocks and testing together within the same project, usually. From my understanding, those are, are traditionally separate projects or separate capabilities um, for enterprise adoption. Do we think that this is cloud native enough given our previous AIP discussion? See lots of thinking faces. Personally, I don't see the cloud native connect, and I think it's similar reasons to the AIP one. Okay. Others? Do we see it reaching incubation or graduation? This one, the name is party name is same as a company name, Micro, my Fox. Good call out, Kathy. Is it? Yeah, the maintainer contact emails in them. So it's not clear to me as a company. It says community driven. I, I, it's not clear to me it's, if there is a company or not. Uh, okay. It's primarily a Red Hatter developed project. Um, it's it's what we use to test you know, a lot of our cloud native stuff. So, with the um, additional information, go ahead, Nikita. Sorry, I I just noticed like it says that uh, lead for tag app delivery is one of the project champions. Should we ask um, tag app delivery for more information on why they think this is? a good fit for a sandbox before making a decision. I think that's a good call out. How do others feel? Head nods. Okay, so we're going to ask Microx to go uh, present to tag app delivery so that the tag can make a recommendation back to us. 
for a decision? It looks like they have presented to tag delivery uh, app delivery. It's just uh, the question is really can ta tag app delivery summarize why they think this project should be put in unless I've missed that comment. I don't think we have that comment on the application itself. We do have um, a letter of support as a comment. Here is the issue from Tag App Delivery. So perhaps what we'll do is um, we'll reach out to Tag App Delivery and get their feel for it. And then we can make a decision based off of their feedback. Does that sound good for everyone? Okay. Um, would one of the TOC liaisons for app delivery take this on to proxy that information and request? Yeah, I can do that. Thanks, Justin. All right, next up, Kate's GPT. KHGBT is Kubernetes cluster analysis augmented by artificial intelligence. Um, effectively, my understanding of the project is one, it is extremely early. Um, AI is a growing interest space by a lot of projects, and this is the first sandbox application that's looking to take advantage of those capabilities. It does talk about whether or not you're leveraging hosted or bring your own, um, which is nice for enterprises that need to have that um, sense of confidence that their information isn't leaving their environment. How do the TOC members feel about this? And, and our tag chairs, what are you all feeling about this particular project? I've I've seen a few demos of this um, because um, because I happen to know Alex Jones, um, and it it actually is it it like it looks pretty clever. You can kind of point it at a Kubernetes cluster and kind of get it to um, suggest what's going wrong when there is an issue. Uh, it's um it's interesting and certainly. But like I, like you mentioned, it's obviously early days, but it does seem to be getting um, quite a healthy community, at least, you know, if the Twitter feed is anything to go by. Yep. Um, I think I it's mean, very, it, go ahead, Justin. It, yeah, it just seems really early. I mean, we've, we've, we normally turn down projects that are only a few weeks old um, and just on the basis that we we can't see what direction they're going to go in yet and what kind of interest there's going to be and um so i would just want to wait probably about what let's say a year six months i mean it's a fast moving field so maybe six yeah. months you know i mean i okay. you know i think that but um yeah well, um who knows but yeah some period of time like that yeah i don't think we'll move this one to a vote i think it, it is still very early i there's a lot of really nice things that they're considering um but probably recommending they reapply in about six months and we'll see where they're at makes sense okay is there a tuc member that's willing to take that on to let the project know or Amy is on some. Okay, Ricardo, thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, next up, we've got two minutes, which I don't think is going to be enough conversation for this project, but the project name is Copacetic or Copa. It's a tool for patching security vulnerabilities in containers. Um, this is also another very early project. Um, I personally would like them to walk through their use cases with tag security because this changes a lot of the recommendations that have come out of the cloud native security community around patching and management of container images. Um, 
none of the documentation that I was able to go through kind of detailed where the where this would actually occur within the development life cycle, as well as how many times an image could potentially be patched before it has to be rebuilt. There are some patches that are breaking changes, which if you're relying on this capability to close out an immediate vulnerability, you could also break your workloads. So there's, there, for me, there's a lot of outstanding questions in addition to the um, age of the project. What about others? Matt, I know you need to drop. I think what we'll do for this one is we'll hold off until the next time before we can make a decision. TOC members, um, tag chairs, feel free to comment on the issue. Um, for the liaisons for tag security, if you all could reach out to them and, ha and have them take a look that way the next time we have a discussion on this project, we're well informed. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.